City Live, a platform to share right. in your okay. thoughts. So, hello everybody, once again, we are together on this City Live dialogue today. Uh, with us today, we have a prominent architect and a Sarod player from Ahmedabad. So, that's a combination which really would be very interesting. Just the way it is uh, here, a Sarod player an industrial designer, a Sarod player, an architect, both have a common passion of playing this instrument. But there are some differences in this. The differences are mainly based on the styles of Sarod. Uh, so, Sohan Nilkant, uh, he'll of course. Uh, introduce himself in a while but Sohan Nilkant uh, plays the Mayer Gharana style of Sarod which is the lineage of uh, Baba Alauddin Khan, Ustad Ali Akbar Khan and, uh, uh, and, and so on. Uh, the style I followed has been of um, the Bangash uh, Gharana, Bangash Senya Gharana which is the lineage of uh, Ustad Hafiz Ali Khan, Ustad Amjad Ali Khan and uh, so on after that. But of course, when we take this um, uh, instrument playing to ourselves and we start learning, there are some differences also even within these Gharanas. So we kind of develop our own styles. So today I'd like to introduce um, uh, 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 Mr. Sohan Wilkant, uh, whom we have been knowing each other for probably more than four decades now. Yeah. Yes, more than four decades. And uh, that was a time when I think he would have started learning Sarod a couple of years before me. And in Ahmedabad, when I was studying at NID, I discovered Sohan. He was in the same city at that time, though traveling from Nigeria. Uh, where he was working, he used to come for some holidays and then uh, we got to meet. And then we sort of uh, got together. I think so on, it will be a good idea if you can uh, uh, continue uh, on this uh, line because it's a nice... Okay, okay. Th thank you Bhargav. First of all, it's, it's very nice Bhargav to connect like this. Yes. We have not been meeting for some time. Uh, and it's very nice to connect like this uh, in, in relation to our Sarod playing in music. I think connecting today is even better because today is Guru Purnima. Absolutely. And uh, you know this is a time to pay homage to your Gurus and in, in Indian classical music tradition, Guru is very very important because there are so many finer nuances and uh, finer points of music playing and learning which only Guru can actually teach you. You cannot learn it from books or by listening to recorded music alone. And that's why I think Guru has a lot of importance and prominence and it's nice that we are doing it today. So I would like to give my pranams to all my Gurus and uh, like you have said coming to the old days I would like to start a little bit about how my musical journey started from where and you wanted to know that also I think. So I, I'll start that a uh, little bit. Uh, I started learning tabla in Mumbai. I, I was growing up in Mumbai and uh, when I was about 9-10 years old, I started learning tabla from a very renowned uh, tabla player, Pandit Nikhil Ghosh, because uh, uh, class, so I started going to music class with him. Yes. And then uh, after that I started learning violin in the same class in Mumbai and then uh, Nikhil Babu had a brother called Pannalal Ghosh, Pandit Pannalal Ghosh, who was a renowned flute player and in the class, music class there in a showcase up there in the class of whatever reason then I, in high school I started playing flute in the band. So I started learning a little bit of flute also. I did a little bit of flute uh, also. 
And one more factor is that while I was in Mumbai, somebody came, a uh, 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 known person. Yes. A new thing, and it came to Mumbai, and you opened it in somebody's uh, and speakers and wires all over the place, and then on. Hmm. I was hearing high, high stereo, and I was uh, I was spellbound, and it affected me so much that I got. Person also gave me a lot of things on CD, not CD. There were no CDs. Right. Tapes, C90s, and actual discs. Yes. You know, when you when I started learning, sir, I was started. I started with uh, Shashi Kambai Gundani, who was a violin player and who had a sarod in his class, and I used to learn from him. And then I got more and more interested to in Ali Akbar Khasab's way of playing, and I got more involved in that. And then I started learning from Pandit Rajiv Karanath, who's my guru, uh, who lives in Mysore now. And uh, I also had the great fortune of learning, taking a few lessons at the feet of uh, Maestro Ali Akbar Khasab in in the in the USA. Yeah. So this is how the journey has been, and then. Uh, we are plodding along, as you say. Now you know we spent a lot of time together, Bhargav, in in Ahmedabad, and used to come and we used to practice together. If you remember, we even went on outings, like old temples and things like that, with our sarod, and we would sit there and play. And I think we have shared a lot of things uh, about music. So maybe if you say something about that, that will be interesting. Maybe you remember more details about that than I do. Okay. Yes. That's very interesting, and uh, you know that actually brings me to another thought. Uh, when we talk about Guru Purnima, that uh, it's, it's it's recently when I was in dialogue with uh, Corrado Rossi, he asked me, Bhargav, do you write your music? I mean, how do you remember all this? Now that's where you know the Guru Sishya Parampara uh, thing also comes in. Yes, and the second thing is that even being together. And playing with each other also makes us a Sishya or a Guru, you know, like that. So I would say that I have also learned a lot from you. Likewise, you may have, at least uh, you may have learned what not to play. <laughs> I will learn no, 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 no. Can I, sorry, can I interject? They say that out of 100% of learning, 25% is from Gurus, 25 comes from within. And and 25 percent uh, comes from your sahadhyayis, means those who are doing it together. So it's a very natural thing that when two people are doing something together, both learn from each other. And it's not necessarily about guru and shishya, but yes, we learn from lot of things, not only from the guru. So I think uh, I'm sure that uh, when we practice together, we learn from each other all the time. Yeah, sorry to cut you. Uh, my interest in uh thing actually came when I, for the very first time, see my parents were, my father was especially listening to various, uh, I mean they had home betaks and all, then once he played a very interesting album, LP of uh, Ustad Ali Akbar Khan Sahab and Pandit Ravi Shankar's Sindhu Bhairavi and it was probably one of the, f one of the first, uh, what do you call, Jugal Bandi playing, duet and that's when that sound of sarod really got into my uh, head and I thought I must learn this instrument without even knowing what it is but I'd like to learn this instrument. At the time probably I was in uh, early college days and after that I heard again I used to follow a program called Sangeet Sarita at 7.30 a.m. sharp every day it comes on uh, Vivid Bharti and that has been another also great learning uh, platform and in that I once heard a, a beautiful playing of Sarod and later on it was announced that uh, this was played by Ustad Amjad Ali Khan and I also remember it was Raj Jyoti and the best thing about Sangeet Sarita is that they related to film music 
so they play the rag first and then they follow it with the film so that really got into me and i said no i have to learn this and then of course sohan was also there he had sarod he was kind enough to even lend his sarod for us to practice so our friendship was really very synergistic you know and another very important thing i must say and this is absolutely true that the, the two of us have always been pushing each other to go ahead and not to leave this passion and i think that has gone a long way so that's the way at least my journey of uh, sarod started at the same time that the journey of design also started and uh, later on i followed a certain path sohan followed a certain path and but our interests our passion and the kind of time we spend in playing the sarod is quite the same in terms of uh, I yeah, think, that's true. I I, I think uh, that that's what you were asking, right? My how I came into school. And another thing was also th there were so many things playing in our favor. That like Sohan used to go to Calcutta very often, and every time he used to say, "I am going. If you want to buy a sarod, let me know. Okay. I will get it for you." And he used to get us saroods. All that we need to do is. just place an order pay him up and it used to come i mean otherwise getting a sarod from calcutta because that's the only place in the world today where sarods are made of uh, of the kind of quality we want and his visits to calcutta also kept our spirits on so this way you know but i think this is quite a lot of uh, history and probably yes. i think uh, maybe the viewers would like to also listen to Uh, the kind of uh, uh, or, or know about the sarod and uh, how we play. So um, maybe, uh, Sohan, if you'd like to demonstrate something. So uh, since you are talking about the sarod and sarod from Calcutta, do you think we can also talk very briefly about the kind of sarod you play and the kind of sarod we play? Yes, yes indeed. That's indeed. what should we do? First, let me do one thing. Can I share the screen to show the two different types of sarods? Please, and then I can tell uh, which. Uh, so right. I have. I think that would be very nice. Yeah. So this is screen sharing here. All right. So I hope uh, folders. Okay. And then I have this one. Right. Now I will go to first. slide here can you see this uh is this uh, visible uh is is this visible to all sohan ji can you see this yes 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 ah, okay well so first i think before we even talk about the two different sarods the evolution of sarod to some extent has happened from this instrument called the rabab uh which uh, which sounds something like it's an old afghanistan instrument and it sounds like this so this is the instrument which came to india and it further evolved into a saro but before it did it is also said that it took an avatar of an instrument called a sur singar which is which which is something like looks like a sitar but it's got a steel plate i will not play this instrument but i'll go to the next slide so, All right. Now, these are the doyens of Sarod: Ustad Amjad Ali Khan, Ustad Hafiz Ali Khan. Uh, I think that's Baba Alauddin Khan. And these are the two different Sarods. 
if you can see the top sarod and the bottom sarod the top sarod has got if you see the number of pegs meaning tuning pegs there are four and four eight on each side and there is a tumba at the bottom tumba is the brass bowl which probably even makes the sound bit helps in some way whereas the bottom sarod is slightly smaller and it instead of eight uh, tuning pegs it has got six tuning pegs so three three here and rest of the strings uh, well there is difference there also the sympathetic strings uh, which are uh, where the pointer is showing right now these are small fine strings which run through the hollow sarod in onto the bridge they are tuned according to the rag these are also called taraf strings they they are 15 in number so far as uh, sohan uh, the garana he follows and in the bottom sarod that is bangash garana there are 11 such strings so all these put together make that sound now, this is the ali akbar style playing right now. So when Sohan plays it also, you'll, you'll get an idea. So I'll go to the next slide. In fact, actually by clicking, the sound started playing. So let me, ha. Huh. Now this is the Sarod as such, its structure. Like, you know, there's a nice sketch here which explains. So if anybody's interested, you can find these things on the internet. But still, I will, um, um, and the picture on the right is my Sarod here. Okay, so now I'll stop sharing the screen and I will request Sohan that if he can, uh, uh, wait a minute, I have to go out of this and leave, stop sharing screen. Ah, there, there we are. Uh, was that all clearly visible and audible? Yes, yes, I think it was very clear and explained very nicely. Right. So there is not much need to explain in great details. Uh -huh. But still, we will show some points. Yes, uh, I now, I just go and pick up my Sarod. Right. So, you can talk for two minutes while I am off the screen because I have to go and get my Sarod. Sure, sure, sure. And sure. settle down, okay? I am going off the video. You can continue, please. Yes. So, while Sohan is getting a Sarod, I will uh, uh, once again, uh, uh, I, in fact, I will show how this is the Sarod that uh, like that is the Bangash Garana Sarod like it says it's got six tuning pegs here and, uh, there are if you listen to the sound of the taraf that is the uh, what do you call them the sympathetic strings that way and uh, this parchment is a thin skin which gives it a resonating sound and it is played with a java a java is a plectrum uh, which is made out of a coconut shell the sarod is carved out of uh, teak wood either teak wood or toon wood so You might like to start your video if you are ready. Yes, lovely. Yeah. So continue, then I join. You are already singing. Or should I? Whatever. I mean, just say me. Why don't you uh, continue? You, you go ahead. You up. Come up here, man. Now, this is the uh, Sarod made in Calcutta by a very renowned instrument maker called Hemen Babu, who has made Saroods for most Ustads and uh, Pandits who have been playing Sarod. And I think things have been explained about this Sarod, so we don't have to say much more. Except one or two things I would like to add, Marco. Yes. That you know the history of instruments and all that. We don't have very clear 
uh, sort of documented proof yeah. and there are people who say that Sarodhi is also related to something called Sharadiya Veena. This is the kind of thing, yes. And there are some ancient statues with that. Mm. There are things, many things like that. So right. the point is that it is related to Rabab also and its mm -hmm. blade has got two angs or two dimensions or two aspects to it. Like Rabagya ang and Binkar ang. Binkar and Rabagya ang. So because Rabab you could not do the mead or the slide, he played differently and being plays differently. Now basically this is Java, which probably Bhargava you will be able to show better, you are near or near. I just showed it. it no? I told them, yes, I just showed the Java. So it... Uh, Our Java has, has a cloth uh, tied on the top part for to make it thicker and to have a slightly better grip. Like, like this one. See the difference between the two gharana javas are this. This has a has a yes, bag and some cloth over it to give a certain type of a grip which that gharana prefers. Where this is without any such uh, uh, adornments. Now there are many resonance strings in this which we don't strike, but I'm playing it with uh, something. <laughs> They add resonance to the sound. This is the sound box and it's covered with a leather, the goat skin or sheep skin. And then because of that vibrations are carried, the strings are resting on a bridge. And the sound is further, uh, it's, it's uh, sound uh, sustenance is added to the sound by these strings which vibrate actually. There are two basic strokes downward and upward for Da and Ra. But I think Bhargav, we don't want to make it too technical. You can just but what I'd like to show is that there are different tones you can create with different kind of strokes. Like Da is a heavier stroke and creates a heavy, deep kind of sound. And Ra can create a more subtle kind of sound. I'll just show that. <laughs> Like that. Now, if you play Ra, the sound can become delicate. And run, different strokes. The, uh, the idea is, I think that Sarov is very rich in its total tonal register and can create very beautiful tones and you can use these tones in order to create different kind of texture or sound. So that is how these techniques are used. They are used differently in different garanas. Obviously, I am talking a little bit more about my garana. Then one more thing I would like to point out is that we talked about uh, the Rabab or the Rabadia which is more stroke work like this. Stroke density is high and note density is low. And uh, other one will be mid. But first let us look at this. There is no sliding movement. In being card way of playing, the, there is mid or there is sliding from one note to the other. Whereas the other one is This is what the Rababa And then there are quick succession of notes being played which is called Krintan. And so on. So 
I think there are many such uh, very fine aspects of every varana. I think I have shown a few uh, from our varana. Maybe you can now add and show something specially from what? your varana. Yeah, I mean, see, I, I mean, uh, there may not be too much difference, but the first thing is that our tuning is slightly lower. This tune. Uh, pitch is at B. मतलब मतलब काली पांच से एक स्वर ज़्यादा, आधा स्वर ज़्यादा. That's B, not B. Whereas the Mayer Gharana Sohan Sarod was tuned at C. So it's a little tighter uh, string uh, tautness. I mean, is uh, more. Whereas this is slightly less. So it has got a smaller this thing. And when Sohan was talking about the binkar and the rabab rabab ang of play rabab ya rabab ya ang or rabab so which uh, he was saying like and the binkar was something like giving mean Now, so what happens is that many times you combine the two also. So, so this is uh, one thing I, I I don't know. I seem to have heard this a lot in the uh, Bangash Garana. The combination of the two. Uh, Kind of uh, ways of playing. Other than that, uh, only thing is that we use uh, two fingernails the, to uh, press the strings against the fretboard, which is of steel. Well, we use the, we use the they, third one also in our garage. Yes, and the third one helps get that uh, interesting effect of crimson. So. Uh, our crimson is not so prominent. It may be something like. Whereas if you use it with the third, then you get even uh, some some more interesting sounds. So like um, even if you take up a, a composition. This is based on a rag called Bhimbalasi. Just I'll play a small mukhda, which, uh, which is, uh, which we made some time back. <laughs> Say that we use the finger nail nail tips to play. That is why you get this kind of a sound, sharp sound. If you don't use the tips of the the uh, sorry the edge of the finger nail, then you get a blunt sound, which is more like a rabab sound, like like this. <laughs> Say as you call, you may describe the sound as more brilliant. It's got uh, more sharpness, more uh, so. Well, so this this is at least one. I thought uh, we can. I, I thought of sharing with you. Uh, I think more than this, I can. Uh, show a, a, a video clip of. 
a, a, a small, a very small uh, two-minute recital. Uh, can I go ahead with that? Yes, please. Okay, so I'll go back to sharing the screen and uh, go to my folders. Okay, uh, let's just see this. Recently, we played in this uh, space. So this was it and uh, the point was that the kind of compositions that there are are also uh, slightly slightly different probably I don't know Sohan may be able to uh, uh, stress a little more on that. They are more of like a, a full structured uh, what do you call it uh, Astha Yantra in a Gayaki Yang style. So this was one composition in Rag Bairagi. Anyway, so Sohan, I think you may like to uh, speak a little about uh, any yeah. composition. Uh, I, I'm sure there are uh, some differences in every Gharana. But yes. basically the compositions of the Ghats, they yes. usually have Sai and Antara both. And uh, they are highly structured and there are so many compositions of different kinds right. in every Gharana. So, uh, this Karana also has lots of uh, guts or compositions which are fixed. They have uh, Sai, Yantra and everything. So, uh, sometimes in a very formal performance you may want to show or demonstrate all of it. And sometimes you may highlight only some part and then go into exploring the rag, etc. That depends on the, on the mood of the artist. But basically all Gharanas have, their guts and compositions are different, somewhat different. And uh, but they, they also have it, and many of our slower compositions are goes based on how your hand moves, da da ra da da ra etc. But it, it becomes a bit technical uh, to actually explain in details here. But there are there are compositions, there are there are stroke work by which compositions are made. 
there is something called Masid Khani Ghat, there is something called Raza Khani Ghat or Sitar Khani Ghat. So there are different fixed formats of various compositions which are there in all the Correct, Correct, yes. So uh, I think so. We've talked quite a lot about our sarods and our interest in that. But can we slightly shift onto the your the, the professional side of uh, yes. of of you? Like you are an architect also. Yes. So uh, I, I mean, people have also asked me this question, and I have my answers. Now, if I ask you the same question, how do you divide your time between such a two very strong uh, fields of art, one which demands a lot of time, that is music, if you really want to perfect it, and the other is a profession, also that demands a lot of time. So how do you uh, go about it? Uh, I might like to learn something from you today. <laughs> uh, well, uh, I, I think the, the main thing is uh, if you are passionately interested in something, yes. you will always find the time to do it. You look at uh, some people like uh, they are they go jogging or running. So no matter, yes. well, I think you are one of them, Bhargav. Uh, you go for morning walks. Uh, no matter how cold it is or whatever yes. it is, you get up at five o'clock and go. Uh, so then there are people who yeah. must play a game of tennis every morning, no matter what. However, busy is in the office, he must have his tennis, etc. So the point is, if you are passionate, you can always find the time. Uh, and you have to work hard for it. But if you are passionately involved and if you are interested in it, it gives you so much satisfaction of making the effort. And that is what pushes you. So when I started learning from my Guruji, uh, Pandit Rajiv Taranath, uh, that time, I used to tell some of my friends this story that I was working in three shifts. There are three shifts in a factory, so I was working in three shifts. At that time, I was a uh, uh, visiting professor at SEPT University, which I still am. So in the morning, say 9.30 or something, I would go for teaching. So first shift is teaching. I come home at 1 o'clock, have a little bit of lunch and a little rest and then go to office. So that is the second part. Uh, second shift, which was my professional work, teaching and professional work. Then I'll come home to, I'll come back home by maybe 7, 7.30. I would go off to sleep again for a little while, have a cup of tea and then start practicing at 8 o'clock and then uh, work till 11 or 11.30 or uh, as much as I could go. Now this was three shifts every day. Interesting story is of one more musician, Imubai, whom you know. He had wow. taken a wow that unless he practices for three hours, he won't have his dinner. He was working in a bank uh, and then suppose they went for a movie from uh, 9 to 12 mm. in the evening. So he comes home at 12 midnight. If he wants to have food, he has to practice till 3 o'clock. Otherwise, he has to go without food, things like that. Okay. So our basic point is you can always divide your time. You must find time for whatever you want to do. And uh, uh, do you also want to talk about the connection between them if uh, if any or some other incidents which demonstrates this uh, idea of uh, you have to work uh, hard yeah but uh, see it's like this i also look at it like this that once you have a kind of a, uh, a deep desire to do something called it passion see one is an inner drive the inner drive for you is that i want to perfect that note i want to perfect that composition now, reading about it is not going to help you. In theory, it's not going to help you. You have to practically do it. So you have to have your solo. You have to keep practicing until you get it. And that is a time consuming thing. But there is an inner fire and an inner desire to do it. That keeps you going and you'll find the time as you say, whatever it is, whether it's in the middle of the night, early mornings or late evenings, you will do it. On the other hand is a profession. Now the profession is also has uh, two components in it. There is a desire to do it because it's we've chosen the profession of our liking. Both I think you also chose architecture because you, you have passion for it. You yeah. know. Li likewise um, for me also. So both have that. But I say the profession has a little more of a commitment to it and it is See, the audience in music 
is like different from the so called audience in our profession that audience we call them clients or clients and our users and we are so called uh, you know we are uh, answerable to whatever we offer them now i may not be so directly answerable to whatever music i offer people so somehow i know see this is a very long uh, discussion i mean it can get into a very interesting discussion but i mean i look at it this way and i also see that um, both of them help each other uh if you are stuck up in kind of a design uh, dilemma or a problem or something like that you take a little break you play some music you get certain ideas uh, it's refreshing i've never really analyzed it that way but but you can say that the elements of music and the elements of design they draw a similar parallel except that design is frozen in time and like uh, in architecture you'll say architecture is frozen music mm. <laughs> uh, so so uh, whereas music is fluid it, it it's like a river flowing and you have to be like the city live recording us right now it's a live thing i mean uh, it's not a capsulized thing that you extract later and you know release so it's it's uh, that's the only comparison i can get but the elements are similar you know line dot tone notes melody which is like a structure you know things like that if one can make such a thing but i find it whatever it is uh, at the end of it it's uh, very exciting very interesting very stimulating and uh, 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 and uh, it's uh, say so called fuel for living so that's the way i look at it i don't know yeah i think i think i quite agree with you that both are creative processes Yeah. the elements of this are different and the elements of this are different in physical terms there is sugar and tal here and for us there is brick and mortar here so there are some technical things also you have to know about how a roof can be uh, made properly or how a wall stands but then there is a whole aesthetic question also as to can i make a very good building or a room with using all these elements and similarly here also i am trying to create a musical form Uh, which is very good uh, using the different elements so the creative processes are there and they feed into each other sometimes you get some idea about something in architecture and you try and say can it can get converted into some musical idea and and vice versa and uh, and uh, like uh, hindi mein kehte hain ek dusre ke purak hai they sort of support uh, each other or supplement each other in some way in terms of the processes which are going on inside our mind so that is there because in both cases when you are designing when you start designing an object or i start designing a building it's not there in front of me it's only there as a concept and then i realize it similarly there is something called miya ki malha raag hai then uh, i am trying to construct it note by note to reach that final form so that is a target both have targets which are conceptual aesthetic and also technically uh, they have to be sound so i think that is quite interesting yes yes and uh, i think uh, is very enjoyable in the sense that like you are saying sometimes actually if you are really too pressed for doing work and then you just say let me put it aside and go and play for an hour then i will feel little better and go back to my work that also happens sometimes yes yes yeah. yes indeed so anybody following any other passion may also feel similar if somebody is uh, fond of cooking if somebody is fond of uh, so called uh, photography or traveling i guess these are nice uh, uh, what do you call them diversions into the other uh, passion and it yeah. helps in directly so uh, so i think uh, that's it i think we had a fairly interesting dialogue and uh, uh, on especially on this beautiful day i don't know we we never thought it's going to be a guru purnima day but uh, prudence had it that way i mean why is this it just happened that uh, it's uh, on this 5th of july guru purnima day that we are talking about some uh, subject which is close to our hearts and which needs gurus also 
to get knowledge from and we are absolutely you know i'd say Raghav, your voice is cracking can you speak a bit louder yeah. i can't hear can you hear me now yeah this is much better thank you yeah 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 so yeah so i think um, in in continuation to that i'll i'll say sohan probably now either we can you know wind up with some something you may like to play for a minute or two and uh, and then uh, we'll uh, give a word of thanks and and wind up at least uh, this uh, part of our conversation for today so uh, sorry as i said the sound was bad you, are you suggesting that i play something i yes. could not hear you properly yes. that's what you are suggesting yeah yeah okay Good all right again right. let me pick up my sarod give me 2 minutes yes uh, in the meantime i'll continue um, uh, my dialogue here i mean now probably it's not a dialogue it's going to be a monologue until sohan comes back but yes indeed um uh, the 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 so called music and profession and especially when this chosen profession is also in the field of art they complement each other they complement in so many different ways that you start relating things you become probably more creative now the way i see music is i think different from in, in many respects because i strongly believe in a in a composition which has which has a very interesting aesthetics which is very different and it can be appealing at the same time so any rag you take the way you build up the notes in there um well i i care for that and then the different other aspects of design like say ergonomics ergonomics is the science of making things more comfortable uh for the users now in music what is ergonomics it's something like pleasing to the ears it's that's aesthetics but it should not uh, uh, you know like if you sound too many notes together it becomes uncomfortable but if you space them apart with good space between sound and silence sound and silence a good so called uh, structure within that it sounds more appealing so things on those lines i think sohan now has come back and uh, uh, we can expect uh, we'll expect sohan that he can play some <laughs>
Very nice, very nice, very, very nice, very soothing, very beautiful composition. I remember you playing this even um, in some betaks we used to have in Ahmedabad. And kai baar mehi bata tha, mehi aapko request karta tha ke arey bhaiya please. Mujhe sab theek hai. Mujhe ye, mujhe ye raag bahut acha lagta hai. Actually, isko sun sun ke hi mujhe sarod sikhne ka prutsan bhi mila tha. डायरेक्शन you can create very beautiful experiences for people i think that is a greatness of our music abhi aap bhi kuch sunayenge na right so i'll play in rag miya ki malhar uh, in our style of uh, playing uh, a short alap
already one hour more than an hour that you've been i think uh, conversating so uh probably uh, it's uh, i think it's it's time to thank everyone to be with us and to have been part of this uh, uh our conversation it may interest people it may not interest people but whatever it is for us it was a very engaging conversation and we really thoroughly enjoyed it and uh, we would like to thank city life for uh, bringing this up and uh, i think i think you're doing a wonderful job by you know making such city life dialogues and uh, once again uh, sohan and i would uh, like to you know give pranam to our gurujis and direct gurujis as well as indirect gurujis uh and uh, i think uh, we'll like to wish everybody all the best let's hope we get through these bad times that we are all undergoing and um, somehow or the other music can at least you know give us some sort of solace in uh, these times uh, what do you say uh, sohan i think uh, we can say goodbye now Okay goodbye and uh, thanks to everybody platform to sharing your thoughts